good. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Christine Zapata with Emerald City Spinal Care, and I am super excited to be bringing you an expert in um, setting up your workstation. Um, I am pleased to be bringing you Michelle Waimura Parker with Ergo Powered. Uh, she is a um, virtual ergonomic specialist who um, offers uh, personalized ergonomic consultations to help people really maximize uh, their individual performance. We have to work from home. So um, I know that a lot of the people that I work with uh, are working from home and they're really finding it challenging to make sure that everything is set up properly because uh, workstations at home are very different than what they are in the office. So I'm super excited to be bringing you Michelle. Uh, Michelle, thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you so much, Dr. Zapata. I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, again, my name is Michelle Weimara Parker and I'm an ergonomic specialist. And this evening, I plan to just give you a brief um, introduction into who I am, a little bit about my background and then um, what I do. I will then provide you with some ergonomic tips for working remotely. And then finally, um, if there's some questions at the end. So again, my name is Michelle Weimara Parker and I'm a certified ergonomic, ergonomic specialist. Uh, my expertise in human movement is supported by 18 years as working as a licensed physical therapist. I'm a Washington native and I went back to college back east and then to graduate school at Northwestern University in Chicago. I recently started a company called Ergo Powered and the thought behind this company was to really um, provide ergonomic consultation to employees in an office setting. Um, in the spring, I was getting ready to launch my website when all of a sudden COVID hit, as we all know. And since working and learning from home have become part of our everyday lifestyle, I developed a virtual ergonomics program to continue supporting remote workers and also learners. I believe that it is increasingly important to create the safest, most comfortable work or study environment in order to avoid repetitive stress injuries, reduce eye strain, increase energy levels, and also increase productivity. When most people hear the word ergonomics, I think they immediately think about expensive equipment, fancy chairs, and the latest gadgets that you can use for your computer. My approach is a little bit different. I really think that um, I start with the most important thing, which is you, the individual. My belief is that it's important to design a workspace around the individual and not having the worker adjust to the workspace. I think this provides a very personal and customized approach to help minimize your performance. I mean, it takes to help maximize your performance while working or learning from home. So next, I'm just gonna give you a few tips to think about when you are evaluating your personal workspace. I wanna emphasize that some of my suggestions may not be applicable to you, and there might need to be some fine tuning depending on you and your the space that you are in. The first thing I like to talk about is posture. I think most of us have probably heard at some point that we need to work on our posture. And I, I think posture um, is actually really important. Not only does it look better, but it can really affect your energy level, your oxygen consumption, and it is really important to help decrease stress and strain to your tissues and to your joints. So I'm just gonna give you a brief, um, just a very brief um, tutorial on posture. And I'm gonna just share my screen here for a brief moment. <clears throat> oh, I think it's disabled. Oh, let's see. How about now? Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. So when thinking about posture, I like to think about starting with the sternum, also known as the breastbone. So if you put your hand on your sternum or on this diagram, it's, it's kind of right here, that chest area. When you take a breath in, I want you thinking about lifting your sternum up. And then when you exhale, don't let it drop back down. So it's a nice deep breath in, lifting. And when you exhale, leave that sternum up. And then think about um, lengthening the back of your neck. So imagine you have a ponytail and someone is pulling the back of your neck up a little bit. This will allow the ears to be in line with the shoulders. 
you'll never, you would never see this in the mirror because if you turn, you're gonna, you won't be able to see it. But you wanna think about just kind of lifting, lengthening the head so the ears are in line with the shoulders. Your shoulders should also be relaxed. Sometimes if you're sitting and you try doing this, some people will tend to arch and the low back. And so if you feel like you're gaining a little bit of low back discomfort, you want to rotate your hips a little bit behind you. So it's almost like you're sitting a little bit further back on your sit bones. When you do this, you might feel a little bit of muscle activation through the lower abdominals and also through the quadricep muscles, which are the front muscles of your thigh. When you're adjusting your posture, you, at least for the first time, really make sure that your feet are supported on the ground. You don't want your feet dangling. It'll be a little easier to, to feel. If you're working on your posture and standing, it's the very, very similar principles about lifting the sternum, lengthening the head, but also really make sure that you're not locking or what we call hyperextending your knees. When you do that, you're not using your muscles and you're really relying on your joints and your soft tissues, which can be damaging. So that's a little bit, a little quick tutorial about posture. And next we're going to talk a little bit about um, a chair. So I'm gonna switch my screen here. I often get a lot of questions about what is the best chair? And to be honest, there is not a perfect chair for everyone. The type of chair that I recommend to people is really based on what type of work do you do, the length of time that you're at your computer, what is your body type? Are you very long torso? Do you have longer legs? All these factors are going to be important when determining a chair. But some basic features that you can consider are is you want to make sure it gives you some good lumbar support. If you don't have lumbar support in your chair, it doesn't mean you need to go necessarily buy one. You can use things like a rolled towel, a, a pillow to help give you some support. It's also nice if you can to have a chair that has an adjustable lumbar support. So some chairs, the back will move up and down, and this is nice because it can give you a little bit of a variety and it can help you kind of refresh your posture during the day. Michelle, quick question. Yes. Do you have um, a, a visual for this? It's right now on the screen. I, I oh, see a couple different not, things. Is it not sharing this screen? No, I see, um, see some share. of the sitting posture stuff that um, you had gone over. I uh, just a minute ago. Oh, um, it's not showing the chair, sitting on the chair. Okay, let me, uh, uh, let me try stop sharing and resharing. Is that working now? That's much better, okay. yes. <laughs> that makes so much more sense. <laughs> so I think I just stop sharing and reshare. Okay. Perfect. Right. Now, um, question, when yes. you had mentioned using a pillow or a rolled towel, mm -hmm. um, now that we've got the, um, the picture of the chair on here, where would, you, where would you put the rolled towel or the pillow? Generally in sort of the smaller, the low back of, of your spine. So where that sits with you is gonna be a little different on this chair, but it generally is gonna be about right into this area here. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, the other thing you can consider is adjustable armrests. So again, these are not must, but if you are able to find a chair, ideally you want the armrest to go up and down, forward and back, and also to be able to turn in and out. That will give you the most options and variety um, and to help you be, make sure it, it, it works well with your desk. The seat pan is where you sit. And ideally you want a seat pan that can be adjusted forward and backwards. That becomes more important if you are sharing a chair with someone, especially someone of, of significantly different height than you. You also wanna have what we call a waterfall or a, um, the front edge is rounded on the chair. And that just helps to decrease the stress to the soft tissue on the, on the lower legs. Um, height, most chairs have an adjustable height where you can move the chair, the whole chair actually up and down. And then some will even have a tilting mechanism which will allow you to slightly lean back or forward depending on, um, on what's comfortable for you. And then finally, casters generally recommend about five caster wheels. So if you will find some with three, five just tend to be a little bit more stable and that's pretty standard. I'm going to stop and then reshare my screen again. That's all great information because those are questions that I always get asked. 
my people, <laughs> and I imagine you do too. Uh, what, what kind of chair? It's like, what kind of chair do I get? <laughs> yeah. Can you see this new picture here? I can. This is great. Okay, perfect. So when you are sitting in the chair, um, the first thing is make sure that you are sitting back in the chair. A lot of people like to sit on the front half of the chair, on the very edge of the chair. If you're going to use your chair, use the whole thing. That's going to allow you to get the most support. So in this picture here, the woman has a little pillow in the back. Again, this, this is not a fancy chair, but she's making the chair that she has work well with for her. Her shoulders are relaxed. Her elbows are at between 90 and 120 degrees of flexion. So this right here, with her shoulders are last about 90 degrees for elbow, is a, where you want your arms to be. You want your hips and your knees to also be about 90 degree angle like this. Your feet should be straight down and they should be supported. So if you, you either want them supported on the floor or you can use a foot rest as she has here and she just has some books here. So a foot rest just to support the lower extremity, the soft tissue into the lower extremity. And also finally, you wanna make sure that you have between two to three fingers from the front of your chair to the back of the knees. If your chair is right up against the back of your knees, you're going to want to adjust that feet pan backwards. If you have, you know, several inches, you want to move it forwards. Again, not all chairs will have an adjustable seat pan, so you can also use things like a pillow to help bring you forward. Okay. Um, next, I want to talk about desks. There's a huge rave about standing desks, and they are definitely beneficial. But I think the thing to remember is that you can sit incorrectly at a, at a desk and you can stand incorrectly at a desk. The important thing is to make sure that whatever piece of equipment you are using, you are using it correctly and really thinking about that posture. So if you are using a sitting desk, you wanna make sure that you have enough space from the top of your thighs to underneath the desk so that you're not rubbing your legs under there. If you wanna cross your ankles, that's fine, but you really should avoid crossing one leg over the other, if possible. Your shoulders, again, should be nice and relaxed. If you're at a standing desk, again, make sure you are not locking or hyperextending your knees. That it's really gonna make you stress the tissue and the joints into the knee and in the hip and back area. And also, if you are at a standing desk, you may wanna consider like a foot rest or a stool, something short where you can prop one foot up and then maybe switch throughout the day just to kind of refresh your posture, give your body a chance to readjust to something different. And also make a sure question, that Michelle. Oh, yes. Um, one thing that I get asked often from people is um, how long they should be either sitting or standing. I usually recommend that people don't do one or the other for, for too long. Cause sometimes right. I will talk to people and they'll say, yeah, you know, I'm not sitting all day, but I'm standing all day. It's like, well, standing all day isn't ideal either. So what would you say is a, um, an appropriate amount if someone has the ability to do both sit I and stand at work? The more, um, that's a really great question. I think that the more frequent you are able to adjust from sitting to standing, the better. I mean, obviously you're, you're not going to want to change every five minutes, but mm -hmm. maybe if you if your job allows it, maybe every 30 minutes, maybe every hour. The more frequent you are able to readjust, the more your body has to reaccommodate, the more that your your tissues are stretching in different ways. You know, if you can, if you have a meeting that's three hours, then maybe try to you know, being either sitting or standing before that three hour and then adjust after it if you can't adjust it during it. So try to maybe carve some, look at your schedule and see if you can find ways of kind of making those changes throughout the day. Great. Does that answer your question? Yes, absolutely, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, next, I wanna talk about monitors and laptops. So monitor is your typical desktop you want the monitor height, the top of the visual screen to be at or slightly below eye level. So in this picture here, she has it a little bit below eye level. Your monitor should be placed between 20 to 36 inches in front of you. That's about arm's length away. The larger your screen is, you will likely have to move that monitor a little bit further back. When you are using your monitor, you want to make sure that it is centered. Oh, 
I think you froze, Michelle. I think we have a little bit of technical difficulties um, to the center of that. If you have two of such down or partial of the day, you want to adjust that so that the one that you use primarily for the day is in directly in front of you. And the other monitor is placed to the side of your dominant eye. And in order to determine your dominant eye, what you want to do is make, it's very easy, you make a triangle with your index finger and your thumbs. You stare at a spot on the wall or picture something a little bit far, and you want to stare, make a little, um, put that spot inside that triangle. And then without moving your head or moving your arms, you want to close one eye. So in this, I would close my right eye. And then you ask yourself, do I still see it? Then open your right eye and then do the same thing with your left. Whichever eye you can still see that object, that is your dominant eye. So in this in this picture here, this person is um, left eye dominant. So this person would put, whoops. Mm -hmm. So this person would put their um, monitor to the left side of their, of their center screen. Mm -hmm. It's important to remember that eye dominance does not correlate with hand dominance. So don't just assume that if you're right-handed that you're right eye dominant. Yeah. Okay, uh, next I want to just go over laptops. So laptops are really great for portability, but it's really hard to be really ergonomic with a laptop because you're either going to be looking too far down, so you're going to be way below eye level with that visual screen, or you're going to be typing with your shoulders elevated. So I recommend either, um, hooking your laptop to an external monitor or using a laptop stand. You can even get something like some books or a laptop stand and then getting an external keyboard. That way you can ensure that the visual screen is, is at eye level and that your shoulders are relaxed and rested on the keyboard. Right. Okay. Keyboard. Okay, my mouse is acting up. Okay, when you're using your uh, keyboard, you want to make sure that your hands are in a nice neutral position, meaning that they are not over, um, you're not going to one side over the other. So you're not radial, radial or ulnar deviated, and they're not in too much flexion or extension. You also want to make sure that they are just nicely rested and they're not resting on the edge of your desk. So most, some keyboards will come with a built in wrist rest or you can even just, you can easily find a wrist rest at a store or some people have even used like a nylon and filled it with rice, just something to help support the rest, the wrist. The same thing goes with the, with the, sorry about that, with the mouse. The mouse, again, you also want to make sure that your hand is nice and in a neutral position. You don't want it to be rotate, you don't want your wrist to be radio only deviated. And again, not in too much wrist flexion or extension. If you have a history of, let's say, like carpal tunnel or some kind of um, maybe an elbow tendonitis, um, they do also make vertical tracking um, mice. You can use a stylus. So there's other, there's quite a few options available if you have a history of some wrist problems. Okay. And then next, I'm going to talk about. I'm going to stop sharing here. It's per, it's kind of what I have on the equipment side. Again, just a very brief. Um, tutorial on that, but I also think there's some other things to talk about. And, and those are more about what things you need to really make sure you do during the day. So eye strain is a really, um, is, is when, you're, when your eyes get tired after continuous and intense use on looking at like a computer screen or an electronic device. While there are generally no long-term effects of eye strain, they can cause blurred vision, itchiness, uh, decreased concentration and headaches. We have muscles called ciliary muscles and they are located in our, they help our eyes to focus. And after staring at a computer screen for a length of time, those ciliary muscles will accommodate. And it makes it, that can increase your, your risk of eye strain. 
So allowing the eyes to refocus on varying distances throughout the day will allow those ciliary muscles to relax and therefore reduce the chances of eye strain. So the simple rule to follow is the 20-20-20 rule. You wanna to try to focus on something 20 feet away every 20 minutes for 20 seconds. And so I usually will tell people, take that opportunity to look at something maybe outside your window, look at something across the hallway, maybe that you can even give yourself a chance to step away from your desk. Again, it's not very long, but that will allow those ciliary muscles to relax. If you are doing things and taking those eye breaks and you are not noticing a change and you're still having blurred vision headaches, you really do wanna make sure that you consult a healthcare professional. And finally, rest breaks. Rest breaks are very important. This allows the body to relax, to refresh. It helps the mind to also refocus and it improves concentration. One suggestion you can think about is trying to alternate the tasks during the day. So if you know you have some typing tasks, some email tasks, and some virtual meetings, maybe you can do a virtual meeting, some typing, another virtual meeting, just so you're not doing all of your emails at one time you know, allowing your body to kind of do different activities throughout the day. I also think it's a good idea to just adjust your posture. So while if you're sitting or if you're standing, it's sort of nice to either shift your weight, adjust that lumbar support a little bit, do something to kind of refresh your body. You don't want to be in a static position, even if it isn't good posture all day long. You want those muscles to be able to relax, not to accommodate. There's a lot of varying um, suggestions and recommendations on frequency and length of time, but I think the most important thing to remember is to make sure that you do it frequently, as frequently as you can. If you have a you know, three hour client meeting, you may not be able to take a break, but see if you can adjust, maybe take more breaks before or after that meeting. Micro breaks are about a one minute break every five to 10 minutes. Again, that's a, if you can do that, that's great. You're taking a break every, you know, just for one minute, but every five to 10 minutes. Mini breaks is about a three to five minute break every hour. And then you can even take small breaks. If you have a long three hour meeting, you try to take a 20 minute break afterwards. Some suggestions that you can think about is getting up and getting some water. Maybe instead of having a 64 ounce, you know, to have a water, maybe you just get an eight ounce, glass, eight ounce glass. So it forces you to get up and move around a little bit more. If you can, I know the weather is changing, but try to go outside. Even, even if you just open the door to get some fresh air, that's really gonna help you quite a bit. Set a timer on your, on your phone, on your watch, on your computer to remind you to take breaks. It's easy to get caught up in the work. We all do it, but see if you can find ways of um, scheduling those into your schedule. And also stretching. I do recommend some stretching, which I'm gonna show you in just a moment, but that will give you a good reason to not only take a break, but to also allow your tissues to um, stretch out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you a quick video here of a few stretches. Let me just click here. Hmm. I think this is gonna be super important for people <laughs> watching this. This is these be are it's very simple. You can do these all at your desk. This is a scapular um, stabilization. I'm going to show a video here. Be sitting in an upright position. Gently squeeze your shoulder blades together. Relax and then repeat. Make sure to maintain good posture during the exercise. So those are shoulder blade squeezes that helps to strengthen the posterior muscles into the back area. It helps to also keep. Um, your torso erect, kind of what we talked about earlier about lifting that sternum. Mm -hmm. The next one I have is just a neck stretch. Begin sitting in an upright position. Use one hand to tilt your head sideways, pulling your ear toward one shoulder until you feel a stretch in the opposite side of your neck and hold. Make sure to keep your back straight and do not let your head rotate or bend forward or backward. That's nice to help stretch the neck, the neck muscles and make sure you do that on both sides. And that goes really for all these, um, the next few exercises. Begin sitting upright in a chair. Lift your arms straight in front of you with your palm facing down. Then gently press on the back of your hand down and towards your arm. Hold this position. You should feel a stretch on the top of your forearm. Make sure not to apply too much pressure during the exercise. This should be a gentle stretch. 
those stretch out the wrist extensors, the muscles on the top of your arm, and these are the flexors. Begin sitting upright in a chair. Lift your arm straight in front of you with your palm up. Then gently press your palm down and back towards your arm. Hold this position. You should feel a stretch on the bottom of your forearm. Make sure not to apply too much pressure during the exercise. This should be a gentle stretch. And finally, just one for fingers, especially if you're doing a lot of typing. Begin sitting upright with your forearm resting on a table, palm down. Keeping your involved hand relaxed, Use your other hand to straighten your fingers at all three joints. Hold and relax and repeat. Make sure to move slowly and keep your wrist straight during the exercise. I generally um, recommend stretching about 30, 20 to 30 second holds. And I usually will say to do left side, right side, and then if you can repeat it one more time on each side. So stretching just as a general, about 20 to 30 seconds um, hold is fine. If you don't have that much time, you, you do what you are able to. So um, that is what I have um, prepared for today. And if there's any questions um, that you can think of, I'm more than happy to answer them <laughs> or try to. Mm -hmm. Um, one thing, I think there was a little bit of a glitch. I'm not sure if, um, our viewers caught when you were talking about uh, the monitors. Yes. Um, I, I had caught um, trying to determine if you are left or right eye dominant, um, but I'd missed some of the things uh, before. If you could maybe go back to yeah. the monitor. I didn't wanna uh, interrupt you as you were uh, going, but um, no, setting, up, setting up the monitor, if somebody has um, to, have more than one. I end up talking to a lot of people who end up having um, multiple monitors. Yeah. So I wanna make sure that uh, that got covered. So do you mean the dual monitors or determining the eye dominance or do you want me just to go over, just so, to review the dual monitors again? Dual monitors. Okay. Yeah. So the dual monitors is if you are using two or more monitors. So some people I've worked with have three. Most people will have one, maybe two. So if you are using the monitors equally, meaning you use the left one and the right one 50% and 50% of the day, then you wanna center yourself between the monitors. So this first picture here, you wanna just kind of be centered. So one is on the left, one is on the right, and they're at a slight angle, like a very wide V. So mm -hmm. when you switch it is when you use one more than the other. So if you were using one 70% of the day and the other one 30% of the day, if you're using the one, the one that you use the most, so in this example, this center one here, if you're using it 70% of the day, this is the one that you wanna be centered to. The one that you don't use as often is the one that you wanna to place to the side of the dominant eye. Now, sometimes I will, people will say, you know, it varies. Some days I'm using them equally and some days I'm not. You know, it doesn't, it, it, it might be a little inconvenience, but it's not too hard to shift the monitors over. So even if you can just have a little thing, if you really do use them 50-50 and then never day the 90-10, it might be worth it just to adjust them depending on what that what you're doing for that day's work. Okay, great, thank you. And you definitely wanted to make sure. That's no, that, no, I'm glad <laughs> that you brought that up, so. <laughs> Is there anything else you want me to review again or that wasn't clear? No, you know, I think everything that you shared uh, was great. Uh, I think everything was pretty clear. I love all of the visuals uh, because again, uh, everyone is at home trying to figure out how to make things more ergonomic uh, for them. So I, this is all great. Thank you so much Absolutely. for sharing. My pleasure. Um, now, Let's see, Michelle, can you stop your screen share? Yes. And I guess the last thing that I think would be really uh, important uh, for you to share, if um, people watching this wanted to connect with you after uh, watching uh, this, how would someone um, be able to connect you? What's the best way to get a hold of you? You can um, check out my website. I have um, ergopower.com. I also have a LinkedIn account, um, Michelle Weimara LinkedIn, um, and 
they can also, I also, I should have actually probably printed a little <laughs> with all that information. I didn't think about it well enough. They can, if it's okay, they can also reach out to you for my contact information as well. Um, or they can also reach me by phone and I'm happy to give that out. Um, this is uh, my phone number. Or if they want to reach out to you and you can pass my, my phone number on to them as well. Okay, fine. great. Uh, I'll make sure to uh, share the link to your website, maybe a link to uh, your LinkedIn profile. That way people connect, can connect with you uh, after this. And hopefully when things uh, open up, we'll be able to uh, have you in the office and hosting an in-person uh, workshop for that would be great. our people. Also, my, my email is pretty easy. It's michelle, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, at ergopowered.com. And you can email me as well. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, um, I cannot thank you enough for sharing all of this uh, content. I think that uh, our people who will be watching this will find tremendous value. So thank you again, Michelle, for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I've enjoyed it. So thank you. <laughs>